Now, sometimes we can't measure the variable that we're actually interested in directly. We have to use an indicator to tell us about the variable. For example, we're really interested in the effect that the number of coils has on electromagnet strength, but we use something to tell us about electromagnet strength because we can't measure electromagnet strength itself. What is it we use to tell us about electromagnet strength? We count the number of pins that each electromagnet can pick up. That is our indicator of electromagnet strength. How about if we were to use this apparatus? We have a syringe. A syringe is something you often find in a hospital or a clinic. They put medicine in it, they use a needle, and then they inject you with it. Here we're not using the needle. We've closed the end so that air can't escape. But before we close the end, we trapped some air inside there. And we've got this plunger that can move up and down. Now we put a mass piece on the syringe. And we see how much does that push the syringe down? How much does that compress the air? And we can put a little bit of mass at the top or a lot of mass. Then we can see the volume that the air then gets compressed to, depending on how much mass we load on it. So in this investigation, what is it that we are varying between treatments? And your answer should be the mass that we load on the syringe differs. But that's not actually the variable that we're really interested in. That's just an indicator of the real variable. The real variable we're interested in is the pressure exerted on the air. And we use the mass loaded on the syringe to tell us about what that pressure is. So in this investigation, in fact, our independent variable is the pressure exerted on the trapped gas.